And uh, we're really excited to have uh, this guy be the first fellow up. Uh, lead singer, Vertical Horizon, a well-known songwriter, lots of number one hits to his credit, and also a fantastically musical guitar player. Uh, dear friend of mine, ladies and gentlemen, put it together for Matt Scannell. Thank you. One of the things that I have always loved about you as a musician is that you are a lover of parts. Well, my father uh, had a guitar in the house, and um, he didn't play very much, so it was leaning against the wall, and I walked up to it, and I plucked the strings. And then I figured out my best friend's girlfriend by the cars by just playing open strings. Um, but then I, I did. I became completely obsessed by the guitar, and I learned a lot from players like Elliot Easton, um, Alex Lifeson, of course, uh, Really memorable guys. I mean, these are these yeah. are guys that that you can sing their guitar parts. Yeah, and then the first time I heard "Unforgettable Fire" uh, and October, you know, those are the U2 records. I just thought, okay, well, there's something else going on. David Gilmour. Um, I, I became drawn to players who created great parts that were memorable, and also who created great tones that were memorable. Did you start writing songs based upon this sort of idea that you were coming up with parts that you could sort of like put melodies on? Or is that how it happened? Or were you always sort of a songwriter as well? Um, I, you know, I, I wanted to be the best guitar player in the world. Um, I had my Passion and Warfare record and my, you know, Surfing with the Alien record. Did you own a seven string? I did not own a seven string, but I did walk into one of the local stores and tried to convince myself that that's what I needed until I held it and then I thought well there's something else and I don't there's another th this I don't guitar know what that has is. a handle in it yeah why do I oh need, no yeah yeah why do I need because that was really the only one that was really around yeah yeah, yeah yeah no but uh, but that was an amazing time too you know you hear this dude who's obviously a stunningly talented player and composer he's like you know six strings aren't, aren't enough for me so I but six strings were fine for me I was not being limited by by six strings if someone was familiar with your career later they probably wouldn't know that you guys sort of started out as an acoustic Thing. So, yeah. so were you always an electric guy, or did you add acoustic later? I was I was an acoustic guy largely because that was what I uh, had you know learned from my father. He was into Simon and Garfunkel and James Taylor, um, and so I I played a lot of acoustic guitar. Um, but as soon as I could, I asked my parents for an electric guitar, and I just, I think they. They put the, the brakes on and said, you know what, let's give it a couple of years. And if you still are really into it, uh, and I was really into it. And uh, I think about sixth or seventh grade, my parents bought me my first electric guitar. And then I had a delay. I had to get a delay unit. Uh, you have to. You have to. And uh, so then I was, you know, it was hours and years and months, uh, like, sequestered in my bedroom with just r endless repeats, you know, and modulation flapping around the room. I got my first digital reverb, and everything went through it. Yeah. You guys ever have the, like, the back when they get your first reverb, and like the kick drum goes through it and everything? Yeah. So every record, <laughs> yeah. 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 I awesome. ran my first mixes, just yeah. the entire mix, <laughs> yeah. through a microverb. Nice. I did too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> microverb 3. Uh, that was actually designed by members of this company. Just nice. For, uh, you know, well done. Your, see, your, your gear usage for Line 6 goes back even farther than I you am, knew. I am so heritage. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's a question. I think a lot of people have this opinion that rock musicians are sort of handed these great contracts and they go out and play these great shows and stuff. But you guys had to do some work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we worked for seven years before we had a, a record deal. And it was, um, it was the best thing and it was the worst thing, you know, at the same time. Um, we sold, uh, I think it was 70,000 units, um, either from the side of the stage or from the back of our... Uh, Jeep after shows. Uh, you you know, had a band Jeep? We had a band Jeep. In fact, we had two. We had a Ford Explorer and a Jeep. That's how, that's how inefficient we were. <laughs> Don't get one vehicle when two will do. You could get a why, van. Why you drive could've... half the time when you can drive twice the time? Why make it easy on yourself? So as opposed anyway. to after the gig where the one guy oh, you know. draws the straws and yeah. they have to drive, both guys oh, have yeah. to drive? Both guys drive. Yeah. For an acoustic band, this seems like a lot of... It was ridiculous. It seems like a lot of... It was of ridiculous. But we had so much product that we had to store. <laughs> Clearly, we were sell selling so many records, we needed somewhere to put them all. It sounds like a fence, is what it yeah. sounds like. <laughs> it sounds, sounds a little like a fence. Yeah. So, at what point did you... When you're starting to go out and play, you know, playing live, it's, you know, it's no longer the gorilla with the tube stack button on the front, which we all had... More growl. Yeah. More Who growl. didn't want more growl? I wanted more growl, and I want. I had that GX30 with the wood grain on the front, where it had the tube stack button. Right? Nice. And, and it just doesn't do anything. 
It's nothing. It's doing nothing. So at what point did you sort of uh, walk into the Line 6 family a little bit? I mean, what well, was it was, I think, the first, uh, the green pedal, the delay, the delay pedal. The delay pedal. If, if we've all seen the DL4. That, that yeah. It's on every pedal board in the world, pretty much. It was, yeah, it was ubiquitous. It was, it was everywhere, and it worked. And, uh, and it was so nice to be able to, you know, the people I saw using them, it was so nice to see them have a couple options from delay. It wasn't just the one delay on or off. Um, and I love that you could plug the expression pedals into it. it. It was it was taking this thing which was kind of a very stock. You you have one option on or off, and making it much more fluid, much more elegant. I thought, and I had loved the idea well, I, before. I was doing the whole MIDI thing with MIDI switching and switching in between presets and all that, and that was fine. But it was also really complicated, and I loved in the delay pedal that you could just. It was right there. You could get it done. It could even switch between delay times with the expression pedal. It was very cool. So you've moved from, you know, you went through, I know you had the M stuff, so you had M9s, m 13 I still use M9 yeah. a lot. I, I love that pedal. It's a great, great pedal. For those of you guys who don't know, Vertical Horizon does a lot of really amazing stuff for the armed forces. Matt has done tons of tours over into the open theater to actually play music for the for the troops. And, and really, you know, you've got some great stories about some of that stuff. Oh, that's but, fun. But you've... You know, that means that you have to have tone that's on a portable, not just on a Jeep and a, and a Suburban, but a helicopter. I've used everything from the small little red pod, you know, the little kidney bean guy, to wow. to the, the HD 500. Um, you know, the, the pods were how we did most of those tours, actually, because you have to fit everything into a Black Hawk helicopter. Um, and, the, and a 412 just really doesn't fit, it turns out. I mean, it would fit, but just it would mean that the, the guy with the gun wouldn't be able to be in the helicopter. So, you know, we opted you make, out of you the make 412. Sacrifices. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Matt has this amp room at the house that's <laughs> it's not fair, basically, put it that way. When, you know, it's, it's really insane. full of crazy ants. But you spend a lot of time crafting tones in the studio. It would make sense that you would have to have something live, especially in that with one box that would be able to sort of recreate most of those tones. The ideal is to be able to get that stuff out of the way so you can go make your music and you can go do your show. And, uh, and sometimes we're, 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 uh, that's e more easily accomplished and sometimes it's, it's uh, more difficult to get done. Um, but I felt like the, the HD 500 was well on its way to, to doing that. Until you, but now oh, you... Oh, boy. For those of you who've seen the videos, we brought him in early to check out Helix, and uh, I, I think you're digging it. Oh my gosh, it's unbelievable! It's hard to it's hard to, to to really express how how I feel about it because I, on so many levels, it um, it's just a gut thing. It just feels right, and I think with a lot of these other products that have that have come before Helix, um, you did have to have a some. Thing of a, a, a willing suspension of disbelief. You had to, as a player, go, okay, I don't have the Marshall Plexi, I don't have a 412, I don't have a real Univibe, so I'm going to use this. Um, and, and I feel like Helix is the first product that I've been able to play that allows me to forget that all the real stuff isn't right behind me. Um, it's amazing how, as guitar players, so much of what we do is not heard by the audience. Yeah. So much of what we interact with as, as guitar players is based upon what our fingers feel, yeah. not what comes out the speakers. It's very possible to have something that sounds realistic in the speakers, but feels like utter dog crap to play. Absolutely. I, 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 I learned that lesson the hard way. You know, you, you, you listen to a record or you listen to a, a track and someone tells you how they, how they did it, and you think, well, it sounds, it sounds right. It sounds real. Let's. I mean, I, I don't. That's how I think of it. So that's how I'll say it. Um, and then you play what they told you they were using, and it does not feel real at all. You know. So it affects your playing, and that's that's really the thing. The little extra nuances, those small el elements of expression that come from being comfortable and from believing in what you are playing and what you're playing through, can sometimes get lost. Um, and I haven't felt that way about this. It's so great. I just, I mean, for the record, I know I told you this off a microphone. The team here at Line 6 have done such a great job. I just applaud you on every level, both from an interface level. This feels to me like I'm a Mac user. So it feels to me like the first effects unit that was built for Mac users. If I touch something, it's going to 
help me on its way. It's going. Do you want? Do you want to assign this button for, as a controller? Yes, I do. We're not quite there to where it's like. Would you like that David Gilmore sound again? Yeah. <laughs> we don't quite have that. Can, there's not a. Would you? Would you like to play better? Yeah, yeah. There's not an auto. It's like you know. I think uh, you really wanted a flat seven there. Yeah, yeah. We don't. We're not sort of quite there yet. But, right. uh, but that would be a really uh, bossy machine. It would I be. Think. It already is. Yeah, it is quite kind of a, bossy. Yeah, it's quite bossy. So what's next for you guys? You're playing lots of dates. Yep. You're touring a lot. You've had uh, songs covered in Countryland. So like, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Gary Allen, a country art, amazing country artist, uh, cut one of my songs, a song called "Best I Ever Had," and had a big old hit with it. And I, I grew up in Worcester, Massachusetts, and we—I don't think country music existed w- when I was growing up. It did. It just—it just didn't make it past <laughs> it didn't the make bubble. It, yeah, because we just had Aerosmith, Boston, James Taylor. You know, that was it. Um, Out in the yard. But yeah, oh my God, wicked. <laughs> oh my wicked! Oh um, God. I haven't sworn once. And actually, it's a new. It's not. I was just there when he made the Helix video, and so he swore a lot, but it was because I was there. I just want to publicly go on record and say that yeah. I led him into that. You cut out all of your swears. I did, I did. You left them all in for me, it's made true. me look like that guy. It's true. I, my edits, I edited out all my swears. Anyway, yeah. so he's doing really good today. Yeah. He's, on a, he's turning over a new leaf. Yeah, I feel. This is about the max, though. Any yeah. moment now, it's all going to... Right, guys. Matt Scannell. Thank you, buddy. Thanks very much. Wait, wait, wait. Now can I swear? Now can I now swear? You, can swear. you are a delight. <laughs> so. James, it's it.